So the next person is Noah Almeida. Almeida. Is Almira? Almeida. 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 Almeida is an environmental activist. She's a Gowanus resident, so Gowanus in the house. And the member of the community group, Voice of Gowanus, she works as a librarian at the City University of New York. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for having me here to represent Gowanus, Yay! where we've been fighting against the largest upzone in the last decade in New York City, in a FEMA A flood zone on the banks of this famous Superfund site. Uh, like all of you who are paying attention to land use issues in your own neighborhoods, I know that current city planning processes are mired by corruption, yeah. bureaucracy, and suffer from lack of real community input already. These processes have contributed to inequity, profound environmental issues and a housing crisis that has only worsened in the wake of COVID. However, the comprehensive plan introduced by Speaker Johnson is not a solution to these problems. Instead, it is a top-down hierarchical project that will prioritize growth as the blanket solution to the housing crisis. And we have all seen how this has worked so far. <laughs> this bill promises to fix unique community problems with a one-size-fits-all development solution without anything more than performative community consultation while giving a mayoral appointed director almost total control over the planning process. The reduction of community engage engagement opportunities is stark. As Alicia mentioned, there are only going to be two hearings through the whole process. There are no hearing requirements at community boards. Uh, during this process, who must choose one of three plans that are just decided by a director that's appointed by the mayor. There, there are no hearing requirements for the borough president, who must choose one of the three uh, proposals decided by the director. There are no hearing requirements for the long-term steering committee, also a mayoral appointee, uh, appointed group, who must choose one of the three plans. The, then, then the choices are getting, given to city council after only one hearing, and the council has to choose a plan. And if they don't choose a plan, then the mayoral director decides on the plan. <laughs> and that's, that's the process, okay? And the recent hearing about comprehensive planning, about this bill, I tried to watch it, it's seven hours long, um, is a great example of the kind of community input that the authors of this bill have in mind. The hearing took place on February 23rd. It wasn't until four and a half hours into the meeting that community members were given the opportunity to speak, at which point Speaker Johnson and many other city council members were no longer at the, at the hearing to hear from the community members. Even the minimal process of presenting this bill at, at CB meetings for input has not been done. They're not even bringing it to the community boards. And those would fail to reach all of the people who do not have access to the internet in this city, which is many people. They don't all have access to technology. We don't have access. No, we don't. No internet, no voice. No, no internet, okay. no voice. No internet, no voice. I know this. I'm a librarian. We, we deal with this a lot, okay? Okay. Um, okay, where was I? Okay. <laughs> there, are no, there are no accommodations for low-income residents who lack internet access or access to technology. City planning is in a crisis, but we certainly don't need a top-down plan rushed through the council on their way out the door without community input Woo! to resolve it. I'm so glad that she brought this up because now it's my turn to represent my community, the Brooklyn Botanic Gardens in Crown Heights. But I want you to, I want you to know something. I'm with Gowanus because both of us filed a lawsuit, and what we said was that the Euler process, as it is, is racist and prejudiced against low to moderate income people of color because it requires people to have access to the internet. Uh, at least 40% of the residents in my community do not have access to the internet. And that means 40% of the people will not be able to in participate in in-person hearings. So we have two lawsuits, we're in the courts, the court is trying to make the city adhere to this and do something about it, and guess what our mayor does? Our mayor decides to do an executive order on Saturday for five fucking days to sit there and remove our temporary restraining order. He stated that those 40% of those people do not matter. He stated that the low to moderate income families don't matter. 
that the seniors don't matter, that the handicapped people don't matter. Because he decides that in-person hearings is no longer going to happen with the EULA process, it's now going to all be virtual. But we got something for his fucking ass, okay? We're going to drop another motherfucking lawsuit on him, okay? Because we're not playing this bullshit. Excuse my French. Okay? We are not playing this. We are not going to allow the mayor to decide that 40% of the population does not have the right to participate in rezoning process. We will not allow it. How dare you? Shame on you, Mayor de Blasio. Shame on you with your black son and your black wife. Okay? As you paraded them in front of us during election time. Shame on you that you would disadvantage, you would take advantage of the fact that 40% of the people in my community does not have access to the internet and decide that they don't matter. Shame on you. Shame, shame, shame. Shame, shame, shame. Shame, shame, shame. And you know, this bill, and this is another thing that I have to talk about. This bill is being projected as an equalizer giving the opportunity for people of color to go into white neighborhoods underneath the mandatory inclusionary housing program. And yet studies have already shown the failure of the MIH to do anything but create middle class to upper middle class housing. There's no low to moderate income housing that has been created by the MIH program. It's a Trojan horse. This is not an anti-racist plan. This is a racist plan. This is not an anti-displacement plan. This is a displacement plan. Just like every rezoning that has occurred underneath the Mayor de Blasio, where thousands and hundreds of thousands of people have been displaced because these rezonings come into our communities of color and rezone us under the guise of creating affordable housing that's never affordable to us. Never affordable to the existing population. We are tired of the scams that the city keeps saying, but we need to create affordable housing. But this is not affordable. And this is not going to do anything but create more homelessness, as his plan has shown to do. So we are fighting back here. We are not taking it anymore. We are fighting back. Mayor de Blasio, you do not have the right to decide to do an executive order and change the law because you decide that the city should not engage in a legal lawsuit where an independent judge can decide for us what's right or wrong. We have an independent judge. She's there to facilitate and to ensure that there's a compromising position, that the people who want to participate are allowed to participate. How dare you decide that the courts do not have that authority any longer? How dare you decide that you're going to take the rights of the courts and the rights of the people to be able to go to the courts and have this issue decided by an impartial person? No. It, we won't do it. We will not be doing it. We will be filing a lawsuit against the mayor and this executive order. You, you are not Trump. You are not Trump. You are not Trump. And we're not going to stand for it.